Hello again, EDF friends. Welcome back to my best DPS list. Uh, we are on Air Raider this time, and it's a little bit difficult for Air Raider because um, he doesn't really have necessarily DPS. Uh, you can kind of configure, uh, figure out the DPS of the request gunships, or the limpet guns, or the stationary turrets, but I'm not going to do that this video. This time I'm going to do what is the best DPP list, the best damage per point. Because each of these, you know, each of these air raids, uh, at least the ones that that require points, have a point uh, point number to them, and then of course a total damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know what is the most efficient uh, air raid in the game for damage per point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a uh, the best DLC, which if there's only one DLC, there's only one DLC. Best DLC per, per column and the best non-DLC per column. And then we'll go over the uh, the runner-ups, and then we'll go on to the uh, next column that has points, point-based air raids. And we'll keep doing that until we get to the end, and then we'll sh uh, show the, the most... Uh, the most uh, efficient damage per point air raid for Air Raider. So, uh, without further ado... But before we get started, something very important. Uh, this is Phobos. Ready to attack again. Wait a minute, we just attacked. Yep, this is Phobos. We're ready to attack again. Yeah, we're ready to attack. Uh, yeah, again. We, we know we just tap. This is Phobos. We're ready to attack again. Alright, let's get started here with, with uh, column 1. I'm also going to give it a practical rating as far as how good it is on the side as well, out of 10. So, the DLC Mortar comes in at 108,000 damage, and it, it comes out, breaks out to 185 damage per point. So not too good, which, you know, I wouldn't expect the mortars, honestly, to be that good. I'm um, a practical rate, and I give it a 3 out of 10. The reason is it comes in so, so painfully slow. It's got, le it's got a pretty low point cost, but to be fair, it misses a lot, and it just comes in too slow. So I just find it, a lot of other air raids out, 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 uh, outclass this thing very much. And then the uh, non-DLC is the Cannon DZ, which is probably no surprise. It does over 1.1 million damage, and it comes in at 577 per point. Um, this one's a bit expensive. That's one negative of it. I give it a practical rating of 5 out of 10 because it's good on stationary targets, like a hive or something that's just going to stand there, or something, you know, it's, it's not good for crowds of enemies. It's good on single single large targets, if you can get it to hit. You know, like Arculus is kind of hard to hit with, but um, when it hits, it does major damage. But... Uh, but yeah, let's go on to the uh, to the runner-ups here. All right, so here's the numbers on the runner-ups. As you can see, the cannons are pretty much going to be your best overall damage per point, even for the low levels they are. However, like I said, they're very uh, specialty. They're mainly used for large stationary targets. Um, and then the mortars. The mortars don't come in very high either. And the problem with the mortars is they come in very slowly. It's one of the first problem, but secondly, they're they're mo they're ma mainly made for small enemies in large groups. But the problem is their blast radius and range is so small that it's not very good on large groups. So therefore, I would, I would actually say the howitzers are better for that reason. That's why I do find myself using the howitzers more. I would say I rarely use the mortars, if at all, um, in the many hours I've played. Even though the howitzer comes in at 15.1 point per um, damage per point, it's still better because it hits a larger group and it hits many enemies with those shells and usually you can you're not gonna be able to get it back up in time very easily but you will actually find a use for it once in a while if you don't feel like using the phobos all the time but yeah um also the negative of this column of course is just it's hard to aim because you don't see that zoomed out view but it's still um it still has its time and place i really wish in the future games they will actually have you zoom out so that so you can throw the cannons a little bit more accurately but yeah let's move on to the next column now as you can see here this is the cannon D going off in the background trying to hit a large uh, group of enemies, which is not very good on just clusters of enemies, unfortunately. But, but yeah, okay, let's move on. Alright, on to the next column with points. Um, here we go, we have the KM6 DLC. It comes in at over 4.8 million damage total, and um, that equals out to about 1,580 damage per point. So, not too bad, a lot better than the first column. I'm going to give it a practical rating of 6 out of 10, mainly because it's relatively expensive, for one. Um, and for two, it's only useful on certain enemy types. Um, for, for KM6, the best enemies to use these, uh, these weapons on are drones, wasps, or um, anything, pretty much anything air. Uh, tadpoles can also be good on. So 
those are the main enemies. You're not going to use it too much on ants necessarily, although the KM6 DLC could possibly be used because it has so much damage per projectile, but still usually the explosives are better for them, but anything in the air it's going to be pretty good at, so that is one positive to them, but of course it's very spread out too, so to be fair you're not hitting all that damage onto the targets, so that's another thing to consider. That's why I lower the, the practicality of it. And then of course the KM6 level 86, which uh, is four lines, and it shoots behind you and in front of you, so it's very useful for that reason. It comes in at over 2.5 million damage, and it has a whopping 4,096 damage per point, so that's pretty good. Um, and I give it a practical rating of 7 out of 10. Once again, I think it's the best, one of the best air raids in that column. However, like I said, it's only useful on certain targets, you know, the aerial targets, so therefore it has limited use. But when it is, you always have this thing up. It's very cheap and very strong, so it's definitely a useful weapon for sure. Alright, let's move on to the next, let's move on to the runner-ups rather. Alright, here's the runner-ups. As you can see, the KM6 are pretty much going to be your best damage per point overall. However, like I said, if you're not dealing with aerial enemies, I would much rather take a Phobos most of the time. Um, the Phobos, the Almighty Phobos, level 88, comes in at 572.2 uh, damage per point. And the napalm come in very low, but like I said, the, the napalm are more of a specialty. Um, you mainly use that to control crowds, so you're not going to really use that necessarily use that for damage. So that makes sense. But the Phobos very cheap, and uh, just the thing is, the Phobos is hitting multiple enemies compared to the straight plan. Each projectile the Phobos is, has explosive damage, so it's going to be hitting multiple enemies, and therefore it's going to be multiplying that damage. So very very strong uh, overall, even though the damage number doesn't necessarily show that. And don't forget the EDF motto. This is Phobos. Ready to attack again. And don't call us for nothing! Oh, this is Phobos. Ready to attack again. And I would be remiss not to include some footage of the almighty Phobos. Um, the thing with the Phobos is there's three different kinds. There's the one that shoots like in four lines, or the best one shoots in a V pattern. There's also the ones that shoot in a long straight line. And then there's ones that shoot in the clusters, which are also a very long straight line. I don't really care for the long straight lines. Most of the time, um, they're not useful because the line is so long, you're not going to be hitting all your all your uh, projectiles on the one on the group of targets. Whereas the uh, four line one or the V pattern one here at the level 88, those are going to hit such a large group of enemies because it's so clustered and tight together. The red the red uh, the red uh, dropping zone. So that's what makes it so strong, and then of course it's so cheap, you're always going to get it back up because you're hitting so many enemies with it. Whereas the Cluster Phobos is actually pretty bad, even though it has more damage per point than this Phobos. As you can see, it's, it goes so far out in the distance that it's going to be missing a lot of groups of enemies. That you can see all those projectiles in the back, they're missing, they're hitting nothing, so there's no benefit to them. It's better to take a Strafe Plan if that's the case, because the Strafe Plan are a lot cheaper. So. That's what makes the Phobos so broken, even though the damage numbers aren't as high as the other air raids. It's just so compact and tight. As you can see, those four lines are crossing at the point of the V, and all that damage is hitting one area. So you can really carpet bomb a single point as well on the map if you want to. You can put it right at the, right at the tip of the V. So very useful plan overall, and just very strong. I just wanted to show a little bit of footage of that too. All right, let's move on to the next column. Um, yeah, I hate to bother you again, but... Um this is Phobos. Um, we're ready to attack again. Yeah, I know, I know we just attacked, but I, we're ready to attack again. Yes, don't call us for nothing, but we're ready to attack. Yeah, right now. Yeah, again. Alright, on to the last column. I combined the Tempest with the Sprite Fall, because there's only one missile that requires points, and that would be the Tempest. So as you can see, the Sprite Fall out damage per points the Tempest, uh, 200 versus 130. Um, the Sprite Fall is probably one of the best air raids in the game, in my opinion, besides the Phobos. Um, the reason is, it calls in very quickly. So it's like the Mortar in that respect, but it's actually a lot more useful because it's instant call-in almost. And because of that, and also because it's very very small uh, blast rate, it's like 60 to 70 meters, it's very easy to pinpoint mobs of enemies that are chasing after you, or say you, say you want to attack a pillar or something. It also is very good on aerials and ground enemies as well at the same time. So just a very good overall weapon. You get it up very quickly. Um, it calls in very quickly. I just very a lot of positives to it, even though the damage number per point is not necessarily the greatest. Uh, the Tempest, I give it a, a practical rating of 6 out of 10, uh, mainly because you need to have the enemies not see you, so you can call it in from far away, or you need someone up front to distract. Um, of course, it's very dangerous on, uh, on groups as well, on NPCs, but 
it definitely is useful when you have, you know, like when you want to take out a large target. So, definitely useful weapon. Alright, let's move on to the uh, runner-ups here. Alright, here's all the runners up. As you can see, the level 63 Sprite Fall is the best, and then comes 76, then the single shot level 83, which I actually like now. I've been using it a lot more lately. It seems relatively pretty decent. Then the level 72, and then last of all, the Tempest. Um, my personal favorite, though, is the level 72 Sprite Fall. I like it because it, it, it doesn't have the highest damage, but it calls in everything very quickly within a matter of a couple seconds. So it's very easy to just do quick burst damage, get that thing back up, and use it again. Whereas my second favorite is a level 63, where it's it shoots for a very long period of time and does the most damage. So I usually switch between those two. But as you can see, they're so close in number, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. And then last of all, the uh, Tempest uh, comes in very low, but you know, as you can see, if you need 239,000 damage, it's very good burst damage. But you know, it just costs a lot of points for what it is, which is what I personally thought the Phobos should cost. You know, a lot more points, um, just because of how useful it is. But but anyway. All right, let's um, let's go ahead and move on to the um, the highest now, from highest to lowest, and take a look at it and see what we've learned here. All right, so here's the overall list. So as I look at this list, I would say there's actually not too many surprises, honestly. Um, I knew the KM6 have a lot of damage and and they're very cheap, so I knew they'd be on the top of the list. But one thing I think we can learn from this is it's more important taking the right air raid for the job rather than looking at the uh, damage per points. Um, like for example, um, if, you're looking, if you're dealing with gr uh, groups of ground enemies, I would recommend the Phobos or the Sprite Fall. If you're going to attack enemies in the air, KM6 is going to be the best, or Sprite Fall as well. Um, large stationary targets, I like the Cannon or the Sprite Fall or the Phobos. Um, large moving targets, I would say Tempest or Sprite Fall, just because the Sprite Fall calls in so fast. And then last fall anchors, um, the Tempest, Sprite Fall or Cannon. So it has, I would say it has more to do with killing the most amount of enemies so you can get your air raid back up. So therefore smaller patterns on, you know, as smaller patterns on the ground are going to be better. So therefore the Sprite Fall is a very small pattern but high damage. Um, the Phobos 88, the Phobos 43, and the Phobos 27 are pretty tight patterns. So they're very going to, they're going to kill a lot of enemies when they get called in. And then last of all, the KM6 level 75 is the five way line. It's a very tight pattern. So that's going to hit a lot of enemies too. So those are, those are going to be probably usually some of your best air raids. Um, in my opinion, the top two air raids um, our level 72 Sprite Fall because of how fast it calls in and burst damage, and then level 88 Phobos, of course. So, um, so yeah, that'll be all for this one. I'll probably do the DPS list for the weapons reload next. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be very much appreciated. And remember, EDF doesn't leave a man behind ever. And if you're interested in ways to support the, ch the channel financially, please consider hitting the join button, which is next to the subscribe button, or watching a few ads or sharing the channel with someone, as it does help financially and it's very much appreciated. Hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. This is Phobos, ready to attack.